Hey everybody, Ben, Somerville Gardener. And I have a lot of work to do the next couple days. So I'm planning on breaking these up into a bunch of different videos. So if you haven't seen one of these yet, uh, go ahead and search through the channel page. There's gonna be a bunch of uh, smaller videos on how I'm doing my planting out of different things. So let's take a look at what we have today. So going around this group, we have a red ruby supreme guava right here. I went ahead and found myself another VDB, a Violet de Bordeaux fig, to replace the one that I believe is now dead because I planted it in a soggy swamp. Anyway, uh, we got a bunch of papayas that are going to be going out in different areas. You're going to do some testing to see what seems to work best there. Uh, there's a strawberry guava, a lemon guava. We got some uh, butterfly uh, weed or like a milkweed that's going to be going out. Uh, this one I think is going to stay in the pot for another year or so. Just, I want to make sure that the other guavas survive outside before putting my nice pretty Malaysian red out, which already has a couple of fruits. There's one right there. And then there's a bushy seed from seed loquat right here. It has a bunch of different uh, stems down at the bottom, so it's going to be more, I'm going to grow this more like a bush over on a little corner over here. Uh, more papaya. This is a Which one was this? This was a red lady papaya and all the little seedlings in here are some seeds that I got from a grocery store papaya as well as some of the other ones We're gonna go over those here in just a little bit and and then I found this golden goddess uh, bamboo and This is what you're gonna see in a lot of Asian restaurants uh, It's a clumping style. So everything it's going to be growing straight out of here and like little J hooks and it's got even some little starts down here at the bottom. Uh, this is a thinner bamboo. I may get a slightly thicker bamboo depending on how thick these end up getting because eventually once these things do grow up, I want to be able to use them for, uh, you know, like pole beans or other projects with little arts and crafts and things. And now on to getting this Ruby Supreme guava planted in our little guava circle that we're going to do on the side of the house. Let's take a ride. You're looking a little floppy, buddy. You sure you're up for this? All right, let's go. And we're just going to take a quick cruise over to the side of the house. And the reason I'm planting it over here on this side here is because this is the southwest side of the house. Uh, I got a lot of pots I got to clean up. I'm not sure exactly where I'm going to be planting it over in here. Uh, let's see what we can do. Let's clean this up first. And just like that, all cleaned up. So. I'm going to be planting it over here because with it being on the southwest side of the house, the sun is going to rise over here in the winter and set uh, back that away. And this side right here gets a lot of sun and heat over the winter. These rocks help gather up some of that additional heat in the winter time. And that's, that's my main concern, honestly, is the winter time being able to keep this tree warm enough so that it doesn't completely die off each year because that's going to be uh, that'd be horrible. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a little ring right here in the rocks because that's how we're gonna make our guava circle. And for this circle, I've selected these uh, these rocks that I've these little border stones I've had laying all over the property for a while. Use them for different projects. That's why some of them even have nice little moss growth on them. There's 12 of these, I believe, make a nice little ringed circle. So I'm going to put these about where they're going to be over here. Uh, that way, I know how big of a circle to rake out because I don't want to do any more work than I really have to. And there we go. There's our 12 block circle. I tried to make it as even as I could between the uh, the house and the border here. I didn't want it to get shoved all the way up the house because I want branches to be hitting the house or needing to chop them off to maintain its shape and keep it from beating up against the house. And I think that's pretty good right there. So let's go ahead and I'm going to now move these just a little bit, excavate all this rock uh, over there probably and just make a little pile and then we're gonna get digging this hole. And by using just a little spritz of, uh, maybe, maybe not. Well, this is bad. A little dab of uh, black paint, just so I kind of know uh, roundabout where it's going to be that I'm trying to dig out. Don't want to even put it on too heavy because I don't want my rocks to be discolored. But there we go. That's just enough of a change. And now I know roundabout where I need to excavate. Now with the circle fairly well dug, go ahead and put my bricks around the edge just to make sure I don't need to enlarge this anymore. Oh, that was a pretty good fit. Shake these up just a little bit. 
there we go. Now we can just backfill in these rocks, use some of the uh, rock pile nice and close, fill this in, and then we're gonna start digging our hole. Now, something that I haven't shown on camera before is my use of this, uh, I think it's a 10 cubic foot dump cart, is I like to use it to dig my soil into sometimes and then mix the jungle growth into the native soil. So when I put it back, it'll have a nice little fluffy mound to it and it'll also have the natural soil along with some good uh, enriched nutrients and all the other good stuff the plants like that's in that jungle growth. So what I'm gonna do is dig this out really big really deep try and square off the edges as much as possible because i do believe that you don't want a nice round hole or a, uh, a half spherical type hole because that'll just help ball the roots up in one little spot you want them to get out there and feel for those new nutrients so i'm gonna get this hole dug right here put the extra soil in there grab that bag of jungle growth mix it into there and i'll be right back with you and somewhat as expected there is a lot of contractor sand not a whole lot of topsoil but this is pretty much just contractor sand, stuff they put up right next to the house or they built the house on top of. Ooh, got a little worm in there. What are you doing all the way under there? So I'm gonna go ahead and add this bit of jungle growth. That should be about enough. Seems like a bit of a, an overkill to be dumping in this much extra soil, an extra one and a half cubic feet. But when you're dealing with some really hard, oh, I got some landscaping, this crap that's in here. Yeah. But when you're dealing with this really hard uh, clay that's at the surface and it's in through here and then the sand, uh, the sand's got pretty much no nutritional value. The clay could be good. It could have a lot of good stuff in it. But we're gonna go ahead and break all this stuff up, mix it into the jungle growth. And then I'm gonna go ahead and backfill this hole, mound it up like a little volcano and stick around, I'll show you the rest. All right, hopefully without stepping in this pit that I made for myself back here. Go ahead and just get this all turned up and stirred around. And this also gives us the opportunity to go ahead and bash up some of these little sandy chunks and hopefully get rid of some of this landscape stuff from where they had sodded the yard. It's got this green junk in it. Yuck all the bad news about microplastics and whatever. I don't want microplastics in my guava. I don't even know what microplastics are. Okay, so this may not be the perfect mix up, homogenous and all, but this is much better. At least we're getting all these little pieces of plastic out. So let's go ahead and fill up our hole with this lovely new mixture. And it's always nice to have a little bit of extra dirt left over. So here's the mound that I got built. And as you can see, it's mounted up pretty nicely. And I did fill it in all the way up to the level of the little border stone we got here. That way, nothing pools in here because you don't want water coming down from the side of the house and filling in this hole and drowning or causing root rot or anything bad like that. So with this mounted up, I'm gonna go ahead and spread it out just a bit, dig me a nice little hole right here in the center and plop that guy right in the middle of it. And the good thing with this is it's nice and soft. Don't even need much of a shovel or anything can make a nice little tree ring right up to the edge or a drip ring, watering ring, whatever you want to call those things. And of course, if we ever need to, still got some extra dirt so we can fill in around that. But that's a fairly small pot. That's probably almost up to the right level. And I also want to make sure that some of this can compress in, give our pot a little hug, loosen it up. Pop it up from the bottom. And now it comes. Pretty good root development on that. Hopefully you can see that from that far away. Go ahead and get that guy set in right there. Just pull this in around it. Right up there to that level. And the reason I'm okay with planting this right at the soil level is because it's also mounted. So it's more like a mounded soil level. So it's up above, but it's it's really not. But we will need to put just a little bit more around here on the edge, build it up just a bit so that we got a little watering so it gets good water. And I'll go ahead and water this uh, every day then for probably about the next week or so. And then after a week or so, I'll taper off to every other day 
every third day. And by the end of the summer, it'll be about once, maybe twice a week, which is about as often as I can get around the whole yard with everything I got going here, which is a lot. And I appreciate all you guys that do tune into the channel. Uh, if you would do me a favor and hit that subscribe and like button, that would be greatly appreciated. Young channel like mine, it means a lot to me. Small young creators, uh, we don't get a whole lot of love from the YouTube algorithm. But that should be about good. Bring this around, make us a nice little ring. Looking good. Get some water for this little guy. And we'll have guavas in probably about 10 years if this thing survives the winter, which is the question in zone 8B9A right there on that line. Can a Ruby Supreme Guava make it right there on that line? Let's hope so, because I want to taste one of these. Maybe next year or the year after. Make sure you check out the channel page. Uh, there's tons of other videos about uh, things that I'm growing here in the Somerville, Charleston, South Carolina area. You may find this is very helpful. You may find some of those other videos real helpful. And I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to check out this video. Now, after a couple of days, I started wondering just how objective is that one guava right over here, parked over here on the side of the house where it's gonna get nice and cooked all winter long with those warm rocks right there on the side of the house that gets the most heat. That's just not a very good objective sampling of what'll grow in 8B9A when it comes to guava. So I'm going to grab another one, which I just happened to get at Lowe's last night. Went ahead and picked me up one more Ruby Red Guava. Ruby Supreme, Ruby Supreme Guava. That's what it is. And we're going to plop this sucker down right about, uh, where's a good spot you think? Right about there? Let's go right here. Now I'm gonna measure this out real quick to make sure that we're at least 10 feet from the low quad, give it about 10 feet from the uh, the Olympia fig right there, bring it out, make like a little triangle right here, and then I bet you some turmeric would grow really well off to the side of that tree there too. And let's see what else we can plant over here too, just to kind of fill in this area. But for right here, we're gonna put this guava in the ground right here, because then it's got a nice big open area of the backyard, don't mind the trailer. And I think this will give a better representation of will it grow? because I'm sure that it's gonna do just fine until about December or so. And then I expect to see a lot of foliage drop. By February, March, it might start to come back somewhere between Valentine's Day, Easter. Temperatures come back up enough to where this will start leafing out again, I hope. And if it doesn't, well, then it'll be a casualty of the temperatures and I'll need to find something else to plant right there, unfortunately. So I hope you enjoyed the video, as I said earlier. So keep those thumbs green, the pests away, and hope you have a bountiful harvest. And here shortly, I will be doing updates on the guavas to see how they're doing and how they're coming along, or if they're just a total flop and they don't come back. Have to stick around.